Hello, and welcome to this beer and, beer and liquor infusion video. I've done whiskeys in beer. Some have been successful, others have been failures. Like the King Robert infusion uh, was a failure because it didn't have any, didn't add any flavor. I mean, it wasn't bad, but you would assume adding the liquor would enhance the product. Now you say, well, we're gonna add more alcohol. Well, yeah, but um, it depends what your goal is. My goal is just like, see how it changes the flavor. I mean, it's common sense gonna add more ABV to it. So if your only goal is to just, in, you know, consume lots of high, you know, high levels of alcohol, you could use anything. I would just say, get it whatever is cheapest. And in this case, this would be what's cheapest because what we have here is caliber. Caribbean silver rum. Um, this was introduced in 2004. It's produced, it's imported, okay? So it's crafted in the Caribbean islands with passion and excellence, the bottle says. Where in the Caribbean? It's not gonna tell you, it could come from different parts, various islands, to whoever they got, whatever rum houses they have production agreements with. Since it's imported, we know it's not from Puerto Rico, which it would not be imported in that case. That would be a U.S. Commonwealth. It's not from the Virgin Islands, United States Virgin Islands, because therefore it would not be imported. That's a U.S. territory. Could be coming from the British Virgin Islands, the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, um, right? Uh, let's see, think of some other ones. Uh, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, Anguilla, whatever. I'm not gonna say they name all islands, but it could be from any of those because this rum production is huge down there. And it's bottled in Louisville, Kentucky by IWA Design Company. $9.96 every day, all day at Walmart in this huge bottle. Handle bottle, convenient, right? Not a sales price, just the normal price. Okay, uh, we have Hurricane High Gravity. Now, this is a little more expensive than normal 40-ounce bottles. Uh, they don't give you the metric number. I guess they don't sell it anywhere but the United States. They don't have to convert it to metric. Brewed and bottled by Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. This one says VI. So I don't know where that is, what code. If it says H, usually that's Houston. Because it'd be Virginia, Virginia, that would be VA though, right? Va, Virginia, I don't know. Honestly, it doesn't because they have 12 breweries around the United States and they produce different things at different breweries. So it doesn't really matter where it's sourced from. This was a reasonably fresh bottle, not super fresh like the last one. I, when I did the duo review of my friend David, that one was from December of 2019. This is from earlier in 2019. Now, we don't get the 40 ounce, ounce bottles of this in this parish. In East Baton Rouge Parish is very common at Circle K and it run 2.59, I saw every store, $2.59 plus tax, which up to $2.83 total. You can get 40 ounce bottles of, of uh, strong beer called malt liquor in the United States for uh, cheaper than that. I'm gonna go put this back in the fridge because warming is not its fun. About the last thing you wanna do with a high gravity lager adjunct Helistoppelbach is what it really is. It adjunct Helistoppelbach is to uh, let it warm. Luckily, it's a little cool in the house, so about 59 degrees in here. So so it's a deep golden color. You see that. Not much head of foam on this wide brim glass. Clear as a bell, bubbly. Abel Nick Nolasco says, what's up, man? Drinking El Segundo radioactive waste. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> well, never had. Um, we think from it. I brought there is no website for caliber. You can look it up on Walmart, like walmart.com. Most people are telling me I don't get liquor at my Walmart stores. In Louisiana, we have sort of liberal laws about liquor. So Walmart does sell all sorts of alcoholic beverages, spirits, and, and they have an 
immense, an enormous variety, actually. And in fact, Walmart has some of the best variety and prices that you can find in this state of Louisiana. You could really clear, clean up coming down here and looking around. But if you look up Caliber on the Walmart website, it's got some, we'll pour a little bit in here. That's enough, not much. It's got some tasting notes. In fact, we might look it up here because we're going to go for a little while, not long, long enough. First, we'll look at Hurricane High Gravity. I know that was introduced in 2005. They used to have that change their website. The old website used to give each brand a PDF file and it would give you the history of the brand. And like so many, like Samuel Adams and others, they've gotten rid of all that history, which I like the history of it. But it was introduced in 2005 and we got it immediately in this town. And it was $3.99 a 12 pack. Now you'd be lucky to get it for under $10 a 12 pack. But uh, I would buy it. I stopped drinking it uh, because I found it. Was, although I have kind of acclimated back towards it, honestly, late, lately, because it has a dynamite. It's one of the better beers that they make, to tell you the truth. Hurricane High Gravity, High Gravity a high-end malt liquor, that's what they're saying on their website, offers a very full-bodied flavor with a smooth, sweet finish. Malt liquor, always malt liquor. You heard me, what you know about that? 185 calories per 12 ounce. So, uh, hey, you know, not a light beer by any stretch of the imagination. 185 divided. Uh, One eighty-five times three, so thirty-six ounces for for thirty-six. Four ounces short of this, you're getting five hundred fifty-five calories. So we're we're looking at about close to six hundred calories. And I I know people that tell me sometimes I need to lose weight. How can I lose weight? Well. One way is to avoid drinking these types of things, okay? You know, light beer exists for a purpose. Maybe the real purpose is so you could drink a whole lot so the consumer can drink a whole lot, have the alcohol effects and not taste. That's my friend Paul's theory. It's not really for diet purposes. He's probably right. But to take it at face value, it's to not consume a lot of calories and have a pleasant beer and... Um, control your weight. Okay. Bud Light would work perfect for that. Natural Light would be even more perfect because it's much, much cheaper and tastes just as good as Bud Light. I'm not going to say better. My friends, many of my friends would say better. I'm not going to say, but it is a very good substitute. But the ingredients for hurricane high gravity are water, corn, corn syrup. So see here we're using, they're using water, corn grits, that's the pulverized corn, which they make bourbon from, then corn syrup, barley malt, and malt extract, and rice, hops, and hop extract. Okay, fairly uh, complex product. I know some people will say, that's garbage, trash, filth, only idiots would drink it, and so on, but okay, you know, that's what I do on this channel, so Some people make videos I'm not interested in. You know what? I don't watch them. I don't fret over it. I'm not obsessed with it. I don't even pay any mind to them. Okay, so let's say caliber rum. Let's type that in. There's more than one caliber rum, yeah. Here we go. Comes right, comes right up. Comes right up. 750 bottle. You know which the 750 is? <laughs> Nine uh, five ninety six, but you save money getting the big bottle because it's only nine ninety six. So let's see what they say. Caliber rum, and then caliber Caribbean silver. Well, it's the same thing. I don't know why they got two listings for it, but it's just probably a mistake on Walmart's part. Yep, it's saying ten ninety six. Ten ninety six. Oh, price might have gone up. It was nine ninety six for the longest time. Next time I go to Walmart, I'm going to check on that. 
still a value. Then they have the spice rum, which I've never tried. I've never tried spice rum of any brand in my life. And that's the truth. Uh, well, they're not showing anything for this, no price. So they only have, it's the same product, but they're listing the Caribbean silver. Okay. Oh, la di da. Um, I'm not going to go make a special trip to check out the price, but they're usually pretty accurate about their prices. And it, it'll even tell you how many are left on the shelf generally. Oh, heck. All right, let's go with the taste challenge. We'll get back to that. Eric says, hey, uh, Ronnie, I hope you're all right. I'm like, I like Hurricane. I'm, I'm fine, thank you. Abel, the brewery is on Main Street in Gundo. Okay. El Segundo, California. Okay, uh, so the aroma hasn't really changed, but I think maybe it's a bit sweeter, like a little more sugar, but the caliber is so sugary. I could have used Bacardi Silver, but you hate to use the good stuff, you know what I mean? I was talking to somebody in Walmart one time. He was buying Caliber Vodka. I said, hey, is that stuff any good? He said, no, it's terrible. I said, why are you buying it? He said, because we're making jello shots for New Year's Eve. We don't care what it tastes like. I said, fair enough. 10.96, huh? Can't wait to go look now. All right. After all these years, did they raised the price to a dollar, a dollar more. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, this beer is tasting a little chalky, and I think that's the age. I would rather have a fresher. This is from mid-2019. You know, at 8.1, they'll hold together hold together better, but you do want to get a fresher bottle. And after I bought this one, then I ran a few stores later in Baton Rouge. I ran across the fresh, fresh one. I said, golly. I said, well, I bought it. Um, I'll just utilize it some kind of way. You're going to get a similar taste, but the fresher ones you probably won't have the chalkiness. Now, I don't care how fresh it is. If you get above 10, 9 or 10 with these lagers, they're going to taste chalky. Oh, here's an old can of Hurricane that I saved in my collection. So, like, you can get the, this is the old 2005 can, you see. It had the HG. It's blowing like it's shaking. Oh, the hurricane. High gravity lager. Brewed for a distinctive, bold taste. It is distinctive and it is bold. This was May 9th, 2005. This is right when it came out. I had to buy it when I saw it. I said, I'm getting this from my collection. And this was from the 12 pack. Well, you know, now it says ale. High gravity lager, but then on the side it says ale. Why would it say ale? Can't be both. Um, that's probably because some of those cans were going to Texas. And W.E., I don't know what brewery that is. And um, here's the can, the modern can, 12-ounce can. This came from a 12-pack as well. But the price is not nice. The price is fine for the dang 25-ounce cans. And uh, you can get 42-ounce bottles of 6% uh, uh, malt liquor here for $1.99. 6% malt liquor, her, um, Steel Reserve 211. You get super fresh bottles, 42-ounce plastic, but, you know, Dollar ninety nine for forty two ounces. Hey Gabe, six percent. Well, I have to say, this Caribbean rum makes this taste like candy beer. Candy beer. <laughs> you say, well, don't feel bad. You might be telling me, don't feel bad. Every beer I turn around and buy is flavored with chocolate or coffee or 
pecans or strawberry puree or uh, um, sweet potato puree, you're right. So now if you're adding sweet, sugary Caribbean rum, so what? You're just doing what mass-produced companies do. And as a Bush, for instance, makes all kind of flavor beer. Middle, macro, middle crow, like mid-sized companies, middle crow, shiner. I bought some s'mores today and micro does it. In fact, if you go in a liquor store and, and figuratively shoot an arrow, you're more than likely to hit a flavored beer than an unflavored beer. You say, why, 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 why? I think it goes into the fact that Beer is in a relative decline. It is an, an, actual, an actual decline. Volume production of beer is going down. It's, it's, a, not a, it's not a growing industry. You say, well, the craft beer is, craft beer is. That's slowed down a lot. The rate of growth there is stagnated. Um, Mass-produced beer is declining. What's the big thing these days? The cocktail culture. Half of America's females, they're very into, uh, you say, you're stereotyping. Yeah, I, know, I know I am, and I'm accurate. They're into cocktails. I talk to so many women, and, and they all say, gin, gin, gin. They keep repeating this statement. Oh, I drink gin this, gin that. I was at Sazerac House Saturday, and I asked a, a lady. I said, uh, what's your favorite cocktail? She says, she described it. She gave a lot of, she said it kind of fast. I couldn't take it all in, but she said, and I add gin to it. I say, okay, gin. I said, my daughter loves gin, you know, so that, that's that. That's it. And they want to mix it with this, with that, everything, and they drink the cocktails. And so you, you say, let's drink beer. And to them, that's like home drum. Oh, no, so ho-hum, so boring. My grandpa and my grandma drink beer. You know, we want to do exciting things. So, and then there's the wine, you know, that's flavorful. Enough. So, um, in order to keep up or in order to attempt to keep up, then you have the beer companies doing all the flavored stuff. Will it work? I don't know. Am I worried about it? Not in any way. I don't fret over beer. I, and I had someone tell me, beer is not going anywhere. I said, uh, okay. You know, no one ever said beer was going anywhere. You know, they still make Clark candy bars, but are they really popular? No. Do you see ads for them in the in the magazines like you did 45 years ago? No. All right. They used to be really popular. Are they now? No. Okay. Things change. People change. People change. You know, so um, things change. Situations change. Tastes change. You say, you might say, well, it's easier for you to sit back in your house and talk about the beer world and beer business, and you can do it without any stress because you don't have any interest in a brewing company. So there's no stress on you. Well, that's right. It is easy for me to do that. It is easy for me to comment on it. I'm not stressed about it. I have no connection to it. It doesn't ultimately make much difference to me. Um, I buy the products. I, I, somebody asked me today, do you ever run across a lot of D or F? Do you ever run across any D poor or F undrinkable beers? I say, yes, but it's very rare. It's very rare. Most of the beers I run across are at the worst of B minus and they go up, which to me is a good thing. Now it's a problem when you're paying you know, if you pay $5.99 for a 12 ounce bottle of beer and it's a B minus, that's a problem because you're paying nearly a world class price and you're getting a B minus. I mean, Hurricane is an A minus at best, I guess. But I would say it's a B plus at worst. Now, that's the way I feel about it. You might say, oh, it's a D. Only a oh, drunk strength that. But I'm not feeding into that negative vibe, okay? Good morning to you, Morris Bohr. I don't, I didn't feed into it in November 2010 when I started the channel. 
I didn't feed into it to it a year before that when I started doing written reviews and I don't feed into it now. It's a it, it, it's a negative way to look at the world. Um, if you read the tasting notes from the cell sheets on Hurricane High Gravity, they say nothing like that. They talk about how it's very pairable with many different types of foods. They don't really give any food pairings, but um, <clears throat> I think they're right. I think it would pair well with many foods. Like, for instance, this fried chicken and potatoes that I, I'm going to dice the potatoes and broil them. You say broiled? Yeah, in this extra virgin olive oil. I think it's going to come out really good. I have all these spices to add to it. So, and cream cheese. And the cream cheese gets caramelized on the top. Oh, yeah, it's a really good meal. Um, and this will pair, pair very well with it. Does the caliber enhance this product? It does, actually. The caliber helps this. Now, on its own merits, caliber is questionable because it's so candy sweet. I know some of you viewers have a sweet tooth, and if you have an extreme sweet tooth, this is your this is your thing because it smells like cotton candy. And regular white rum, silver rum, clear rum, whatever you want to call it, does not smell like cotton candy. Most silver rums that I've smelled smell like an oak barrel, char, charcoal, and um. Oh, well, you know, like processed sugar cane, sugar cane. We grew up around sugar cane here. So that's, but this doesn't smell, if you smell sugar cane, it does not smell like cotton candy. It's like, woo. Or I'm going to put a little bit more. I'm going to put a lot more. I'm going wild. No, I'm just joking. It's a kind of a nice label. I mean, it's pretty rudimentary. It's just a blue and silver. Label. It's got a rum barrel, a Caribbean island with mountains in the background, and a clipper ship. If you go where this is produced, could you see mountains in the background and a palm tree and all that? Yeah, you could. Would you see rum barrels? Perhaps. Would you see a clipper ship? Uh, seriously doubt that unless you went to a tourist area in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and it was like the Museum of Puerto Rican History or something like that, but it's unlikely you're going to see a clipper ship. You might see a cruise ship. Will they be drinking rum on the cruise ship? I think we know the answer to that question. Hello, Ron. Hey, Maxwell. Now, I don't know if they drink a lot of rum in the Russian Federation. Vodka, vodka potato vodka is there, I think, but they might drink rum in Russia. I don't I don't know. A lot of the sort of unusual off the wall Canadian whiskeys that we get here in America, like we pay no mind to them. Like um, I'm trying to think of one, just something you would think, eh, black velvet, who cares? Over in Germany, it's like black velvet, black velvet. And it's like a big thing. And I'm thinking, wow, okay, it's not even that good. If I was looking to drink a Canadian whiskey, and I might theoretically be looking to do that, although I never drink them except for taste challenges, uh, I would pick the Canadian Club 12-year age, the, the small batch, 12-year. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a great one. It's a great, that's a great Canadian whiskey. I mean, it's not world class, but it's really good. If I was looking to drink a white rum, and I wouldn't be, you know, but... I don't have to look to drink them because I do so many taste challenges. I am practically, you know, in a practical sense, always drinking them, right? Like I tell people, I never drink whiskey or liquor at all. I never drink liquor and I don't. They say, but you do taste challenges all the time. Right. That's the only time I drink them. So, you know, in a practical sense, I do drink them. But um, yeah, okay. I would be very careful with doing this experiment. I've got a 40 ounce bottle and I have a lot left. And over the course of today, I'll drink it all, drink it all. And I'll probably add one. Let me think about that. I might add one more beer. I might do a beer review, but I have so much backlog that I don't know what to do. Like, how can I post all these videos? It's like people are going to get, they're going to say, oh, I'm going to unsubscribe. All you do is post videos all the time. Well, I mean, that's kind of the point of subscribing, but um, right, yeah, they make videos, you watch them. But um, 
I mean, I have a backlog over a week ago. It's craziness. And then when Jean-Pierre, the Beverage Ramble, and David Garlapede and I got together, we just started. I mean, they're like me. They like they don't get tired of it. So they're like, let's review this. Let's review that. This, that, this, that, this, that, this, that. Like they just like, there's no end point. They don't want to stop. I think you could say, let's stay up for 24 hours and see how bad we feel. And within that 24 hour period, every time we get a notion to review a beer or liquor, we'll just review it. And they would do it. They would go along with it. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but that's how, in, like, sort of like, um, you don't want to use the word addicted. That's not a good term to use in this kind of um, setting. That's how enthusiastic about it they are. And I am. Yeah, that sounds better. We're enthusiastic about it. So, um, but be careful with this because this stuff, this beer on its own is very strong. If you drink one 40 ounce bottle, that would, that would be a danger on its own. The serving is 12 ounces. They're not saying drink 40 ounces. It isn't produced for that. You say, well, bums drink it and they drink the whole bottle and pass out in the street. Well, that's really not the responsibility of Anheuser-Busch InBev. Okay. They make a 40 ounce bottle. And if you look at the old television ads from the 1950s, they're called a party bottle. Like you're having a dinner party, barbecue, like, okay, a Super Bowl party coming up. You buy five of those bottles and people come over and you pour them out into glass, you know, you serve it in glasses and people drink it while they're watching the game. And it just, you go through that 200 ounces and you enjoy it. You just keep them in the fridge. Now, it's funny. People will use the insulators, koozies, whatever they call it, insulators. I think koozie comes from the word cozy. It's cozy, keeps it cozy. But that would be warm, right? Koozie keeps it cold. But you know what I'm saying? It's an insulator. Well, if you buy party bottles like the 40 ounce, this is not difficult. You put it back in a refrigerator when you want more. You pour more and it stays cold. You don't sit there and put the 40 ounce bottle on the table outside where it gets warm and hot. I mean, well, don't do that. And don't drink out of a bottle and don't drink out of a can. Drink out of a glass. You say, well, I got to wash the glass. That's not hard to wash. Don't be lazy. Just wash the glass and get some really hot water. So wash it, let it dry. Easy. I wash my glasses every day. It's, just, it's a, can't snap right now. It's a snap. <laughs> How do, Ron Aru? Hey, beer hound. Bill, if you ever want to join us in our hangouts, feel free. You're always welcome. That is a fact. Send me your email. I'm on Gmail. Actually, the best way to contact me, people, because it's complicated. A lot of people use aliases and whatever, and you can't remember. Like, they'll say, don't you know me? I'm Kakagi on YouTube, and I'm Lele Ma on, I don't know. I can't keep up with all these crazy names, you know. Uh, and I got an alien for Avatar on YouTube, and I got a, a, a rat terrier from an alias on Facebook. I was like, no, I can't keep up with that. You know, we, we have a beer group, beer, wine, liquor on Facebook called Alcohol Legs. And the reason I created Alcohol Legs really was so people could have a, main, uh, a, a hub where they could post what they're drinking and people could talk about it. And then we could connect. So, like, you'll see me with the false, you always see me with the false staff beer icon avatar. So many, many, many people have joined alcohol legs and then they'll say, Hey, I'm so-and-so. Um, could I do hangouts like Jojo did? And I said, well, of course we don't ever exclude anybody. I mean, unless they misbehave that crazy, you know, in the hangouts, like we had one person was interrupting everybody, wouldn't let anybody talk. And I was like, you got to calm down. He wouldn't stop. So we had the banning. Well, it was not, wasn't anything personal. And then he was saying, you banned me. Oh, we didn't ban you. You know, we take turns. That's how we do it on there. We all give each person a chance to say what they want about the beer. It's, it's like what you call having good manners, etiquette. Having uh, some kind of intelligence. Oh, your email's on your profile. Huh. I'm going to look that up because if it is, I can add you to beer... Well, on Facebook, it's called Beer Talk. That's our hangout chat, where we mainly just coordinate when we're going to do hangouts. And then people like Gabe will post like news about, oh, this beer came out that's promoted by a wrestler or whatever. 
And I might pay attention to that to an extent, but I don't know about the product. Uh, and then on Google Hangouts, we call it International Beer Review Guild. And uh, Tyler Mansell came up with that term, the International Beer Review Guild. And then it's the same thing. We'll coordinate hangouts. That's really all it is. And um, James P. Madonna was complaining and saying, uh, I'm quitting these hangouts because it wakes me up all night. I said, well, why would it wake you up all night? He said, well, people post messages at three in the morning. I said, well, all you got to do is set it to where it won't alert you. And then you can just check on it at your convenience. And But you never could, whatever, figure out how to do that setting. I mean, I don't get notices at three in the morning. Well, I'd be probably, probably be awake, you know. But I mean, I don't get notices from Beer Talk or the International Beer Review Guild because I have it set to where I don't get notices. I check it when I feel like checking it, which is mm, basically every day. Jägermeister cold brew, coffee, good or bad? I don't know. I've never had it. Joseph, you make all these comments about beers that you want me to review. I haven't had, I haven't had most things. Okay, Joseph, I haven't had, if you name a thousand brands of beer, wine, and liquor, I've had maybe 10%. Okay. I can't get everything you want me to try. I'm not a liquor store. I'm just a private person. So I, I can only taste what I have access to or time to get. So you can, you can keep suggesting things if you like doesn't bother me, but I can't actually address them generally. I like, like someone said in your video of Hurricane, it tastes like high ABV version of Budweiser. Yeah, but I think it tastes better than Budweiser, but I shouldn't say that because high H smokes a Hurricane is strong drink. Yeah, you'll get faded. I usually have to be inebriated to do a live chat. Yeah, I'm going to get off of this because I'm going to go start those potatoes because they take a long time to, you know, potatoes take forever to, to bake, you know, right? And I don't want to eat potatoes that are crunchy. I want to eat potatoes that are soft, like, you know, cooked potatoes. Yeah, Steve Austin beer. Right. Um, so this was a success. I would recommend, yes, I would recommend adding Caliber rum, which is unique on its own, to Hurricane High Gravity. It gives it a candy taste. Um assuming you'd ever want to drink a high gravity malt liquor that tastes like candy, but you might, and it does. And it's not a bad flavor. Uh, probably all of my teeth are rot out. Yeah, I know they're not the straightest teeth, but then I never had cavity. I never, oh, well, I can't say that. I never had a filling. You know, I might have cavities, but when I drink, drink cold drinks, I don't say, oh, it hurts, you know? So that's usually a sign that you have a cavity. It'll hurt. Have a groovy day, Ron. Thank Talk to you later. Okay, beer hound. I'm going to check your, uh, email and I'll add you to the groups if I'm able to, for what it's worth. A lot of people, are, and I'm going to close this out. A lot of people are very shy, which I can understand. And they, they are reluctant to join beer hangouts. Thanks, uh, Joe. Add me, add me. Well, I don't know who you are. <laughs> you know, do you have a channel or are you a real person? So, um, In a, in a solo setting, it's comfortable because you're in control, and I understand that, and you can make it any way you want. In a group setting, it's intimidating in a way because you got all these people you don't know, and they're all talking, and you're thinking, what, did I say something wrong, or did I look like I was stupid, you know? Or, and I've had people tell me privately, I'm not going to join anymore. I just feel uncomfortable doing it. I said, okay. I understand that. All right, so we're going to add Beer Hound. And if he feels like joining, he can. And if he doesn't want to join, he doesn't have to. And we're not going to take issue with that. We won't take issue with it at all. I'm your biggest fan. I don't know if you're my biggest fan because I got a lot of them. But you might be. <laughs> all right. Anyway, um, thanks for watching this uh, Infusion video. It was very successful. We've been on 34 minutes. Uh, but I think we talked about some interesting concepts. And, um, yeah, Caliber, it's... Um, Kind of different, but uh, not bad. I can't say, I'm not going to get on here and say it's bad because it tastes like uh, rock candy. No, I'm not going to say that. It's unusual. It is unusual. But it's unique. And 
there's a place for unique in this world, I think. All right, thanks for watching this video production, and I'll be back soon. Well, you know me, I'll be back sooner than maybe you want me to be back, but okie doke.